guys, my name is Julie and this is The Curated Curvy where I bring you along for the journey as I attempt to create the curated wardrobe of my dreams with these two hands. And today I have for you all a 2022 year in review. So 2022 um, was, it was a quite eventful year for me in terms of sewing. It wasn't a year of a lot of growth, but we'll talk about that in a little bit more. It was definitely a year of a lot of sewing. So how I wanna do this video is break it up into three parts. So, so first I'm going to talk about my mo my most worn me mates of the year. Then I want to get into any sewing takeaways and then I wanna get into where I plan on going in the future. So without further ado, let's get into the most worn makes of 2022. Now okay, trying to judge the most wear mix can be a little bit tricky because some things were made in the beginning of the year and some things were made in the end of the year. So I'm basically going to judge this by no matter when I made it, how often I was reaching for it and wearing it and repeating it. I will start with this black, this um, t-shirt that I'm wearing right now. This is McCall's 7983. This pattern is originally a bodysuit and I have hacked it to be a mock neck crop top. I did make this in December, but since I have made it in December, I kid you not, I've worn it at least seven times. So yeah, definitely something that I constantly reach for. I look at this to me, even though it is a print and it is busy as a neutral, because as you can see, your girl doesn't really do quote unquote neutrals. So this for me is a neutral. It is something that I can layer up, that I can layer down. I have gotten a ton of wear out of it. I took it on vacation with me and at that, on that vacation, I had like a 10 item capsule wardrobe. And so I was able to pair this top with multiple shorts and pants and dresses and layer it and I absolutely adore it. Next on my most worn make um, makes of 2022, number two are these pants. These are Vogue 1871. One. So um, this is the final version of these shorts that I've made. I've made four versions of these. These are just basically like really loose fitting shorts. They have inseam pockets and an elasticated waistband. This pair in particular, I have worn two pieces and it is still holding up. It is 100% linen that I picked up from Joann's. I have washed and worn and washed and worn and I plan to wash and wear until these shorts have nothing more to give. So these are definitely one of my top 10 most worn makes of 2022. All right, let's see this. This is a self-drafted wrap front top. This top has no closures. It is joined together by just this tie in the front. Big puffy sleeves, elasticated cuff on the sleeves. I made this top because I was inspired by Elliot, um, by the Elliot top by Cool Stitches pattern, but that top doesn't come in my size, so I attempted to make something like it. This looks nothing like that top but it is a brilliant accident i am very very happy with this i made this like end of spring beginning of summer but even up until i think like last weekend i wore this top like it was like 67 degrees out and i felt like you know i mean it's not freezing it's not warm it's just somewhere in between and this was adequate with like my long denim skirt so yeah i absolutely love this top i have worn this on top it is this beautiful crisp white cotton this was a bed sheet that i had thrifted and it just washes and wears beautifully this in. dress um was in age uh, i believe it, i need to pronounce it it's called age okay so this dress was an age inspired inspired dress it is self-drafted from a thrifted duvet cover absolutely love this dress i have worn it a ton it took forever to make and it is a massive amount of fabric in here but this is definitely not only one of my most worn makes of 2022 but it is the thing that i am proudest of just because of the amount of details and the frilliness and just the patience and perseverance it took in like looking at a picture and then trying to use what little skill set I had in self-drafting to reproduce that garment this is a dress that I want to keep working on this year and see where else we can take it. I would love to do another version of this with the stand collar. We'll see. It has giant puffy sleeves, has a tie on the sleeve. It has two tiers and the ruffles are sewn on top of the dress. You get like that exposed ruffle on the top. Has a yoke and some gathering here. Um, just like one panel for the back and then the two ruffles. Love, love, love this dress. Two pieces. Number five on my most worn makes of 2022 is another dress. It is this linen viscose blend. This is a linen viscose fabric that I picked up from Joann's quite a while ago. Um, yeah, it is another self-drafted dress. So this is a self-drafted square neckline dress, has long puffy sleeves and a little cuff on the bottom, a gathered skirt with a lot of gathers in it. Like, I mean, it's pretty, the fabric behaves well and drapes nicely, but you can see there are 
there's a good bit of gathering in the skirt and then it also has a nice deep hem on the bottom this dress does not have a back zip which is another thing i really like about it i can just pull it over my head made it a really easy sew the bodice is lined there's some darts in the front and darts in the back and yeah I absolutely love this dress. I do wear it a 10. I am actually like rifling through my stash currently to try and find a thicker fabric to make another one in to wear in the colder months. Even though the neckline is a little bit low, I'm thinking that I can make like an infinity scarf to like cover that portion up for when I'm out and about. But I love this dress. I have worn this dress a lot. I believe that was number five. Number six is definitely going to be this which is another self-drafted dress you would think i self-draft a lot but i really don't um and what i do is pretty simple it's not like i'm like flexing my skill set or anything it's literally just taking a bodice changing the neckline and then adding like some sort of skirt onto it which is usually like a rectangle or so hey bud um so this dress it needs to be ironed but when it is ironed it does lay flat it is just an oversized collar on a regular um like crop bodice again added some giant puffy sleeves i believe the sleeves on this one i did self-draft and then i added a cuff to it the skirt of this dress is pleated because it was just a lot trying to gather all of this fabric in there so i just used a fork and did the fork pleating method pleated on the front it is pleated on the back and then it has like a semi deep hem yeah and this was a relatively simple make like i said the where i didn't say but the biggest part of figuring this pattern out was just figuring out how to get the collar to fit so i did do a mock-up first in this purple cord and i just made the shirt version of this this is actually the shirt that i'm wearing in like my youtube picture um so i made the mock-up version and then i figured out what tweaks i needed to make and i made the final version and it came out absolutely gorgeous i wear this a ton as you can see like i said it just came out of the wash so it's wrinkled because it's constantly being worn and washed it is so warm and just so easy to wear in the colder months i really don't need a jacket with this i can just put on some tights and my boots and i'm usually pretty good to go i believe that was number six let me double check so we talked about one we talked about two we talked about three four was that five maybe that was five Okay, I think that was five. I should keep track of this. We're gonna say that was five, so this is number six. Number six of my top 10 most worn makes of 2022 is this Kaja um, dress pinafore hat. The Kaja dress is a pattern by Schultz Apparel and it is originally, it is originally, excuse me, a pinafore dress, which I have here. This is what the pattern is intended to look like um, when you sew it as per the instructions. This would definitely be number seven on my most worn makes of the year because i have worn this a ton i still do wear it a ton so this is definitely up there but for number six jumping back a little is this hacked version that i made this was a summer dress i made it out of a thrifted bed sheet the bed sheet was like a muslin bed sheet it's a cotton polyester blend and it is so light and so crisp and so breathable and it washes and it wears absolutely beautifully we had a brutal summer this past year it was averaging like 100 degrees every day and that was like on the lower end we were getting up to like 111 degrees so it was hot and i needed something that was just light and airy and didn't stick to my body and this was definitely that so with this um hack i scooped out the neckline in the front i scooped it out even more in the back instead of lining it i just finished all of the edges with some really fun bias binding that i picked up from joann's i added patch pockets in the front with like a little pleat detail instead of the inseam pockets that the pattern comes with. Took a little bit of finagling and a little bit of figuring out, but love this word a ton. And I am surprised that it is still held up with as much as I washed and wore it over the summer months. So number eight is a, another self-drafted dress. And this is, was another Aje inspired dress. Um, saw the dress, loved the dress. Was like, I'm gonna try my hand at recreating it. And this is what I came up with. The bodice is self-drafted. The rough, like the whole bodice piece is self-drafted. And then the sleeves are from the Vicky Sews Uni dress. The skirt is just a rectangle with a ruffle on the bottom. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. The fabric is a thrifted bed sheet that I thrifted while I was in Miami, Florida over the summer and I absolutely absolutely adore this dress it is so fun the print is like so miami if you are not familiar with miami florida it is a very like fast paced very um cultured very lively place and so this fabric just really really reminds me of miami which is where i grew up um 
So yeah, this was a really fun make and something that I have gotten a good bit of wear out of. I left the edges of the neckline raw and I think that's just like a really fun touch. Hopefully I can find the inspiration picture to put in so that you can see the inspiration picture as well. Um, but yeah, I really do love this dress and I have worn it. I've worn it a ton. Number nine would probably have to be this slip dress. This is Vogue 9278. Um, this is like my vacation go-to dress. I am, as I mentioned, from Miami, Florida, and last year we were able to go back home to Miami three times in the year, and each time we were gone, we were gone for about like anywhere from a week to two weeks, and so, or we went to Miami twice and then we took one vacation elsewhere, but... I, every time I go on vacation, I take this dress as a part of my vacation capsule. I try to only travel with capsule wardrobes because it just dwindles down like the amount of stress that is sometimes involved with getting dressed, especially on vacation. And every time I go, I take this dress and I wear it a ton. I absolutely adore this dress. This was the second version of this dress that I made. The first version has been donated because there were some tweaks that needed to be made to the pattern um and that version like the first version straight out of the package just didn't fit me the way that i would find flattering so with this one i graded out to give myself like more room during like on the hip so this pattern has like more of a hip curve um what i also realized was that in the original pattern i cut out the pattern out the wrong bust cup size and so with this one i've taken a lot of um i've taken some out from the center seam of the bust pattern just to make it fit me nicer and like i said i have worn this dress a ton and this is a linen viscose blend that i picked up from joann's and it has held up beautifully through the year absolutely beautifully so that is is that nine I don't know why I'm not keeping up with these numbers. I think that's nine. Okay, number 10 is going to be this. Now this is a later make in the year. I have only had this in my wardrobe, this set for a month. This is a self-drafted racerback tank. These are the pants from the Vogue 1914 loungewear set sized up to give an extra white leggedness effect. And even though I have only had these in my um, like wardrobe for a month, I have worn this set, I want to say without exaggerating, at least 10 times. When I was in Miami, I accidentally forgot to pack all of my loungewear because I was so fixated on making this. So that trip alone, I wore this like five times. Like I'd wear it at night, I'd wash it and rewear it probably more than five times if I'm being honest because it was the only thing I had to wear like when I was at home in the house. Um, and since being home, I wash and wear this a lot. I love to wear this around the house. It is so comfortable, it is so cozy. This is a slightly, I don't know if you'd call it like a ribbed knit, but I picked this up from Hobby Lobby and I actually was able to find some more of it. It is pilling. I don't know if you can see or if the screen's gonna catch that, but it is pilling quite a bit. It has some fuzzies on it, so it's not holding up to all of my washing and wearing as well as I thought it was initially. And there's a giant grease stain on it somewhere because I need to make aprons and actually wear them <laughs> so that I don't ruin my stuff in the kitchen all the time. But this has definitely been something that I have been wearing a lot and I do plan on making another set, hopefully in a higher quality fabric. I don't even care if it is because it's so comfortable and I'm very just okay with wearing this around the house. And if it looks a little worn, I can replace it. I'm definitely gonna try and get that stain out. But yeah, I think this is number 10, even though it's a duo. I don't know if it's number nine or 10. We're gonna say it's number 10. All right, and that's that. So those are my most, my 10 most worn makes of the year. Now, really quickly, I want to talk to you about the my favorite make of the year. So I haven't worn this much at all, but it is something that has just bought me so much joy and I absolutely love, and that is my strawberry bubble frock so this is the bubble frock by Lydia Naomi studio um, the original pattern does have a scalloped edge all around the front I eliminated it because there is a um, there's a designer by the name of Cicely Banson Banson or Bonson one of those and she does these dresses that has like the fitted like empire waistline and then the fuller poofy skirt and so I felt like by eliminating that that, uh, what did I call it, the scalloped edge, I was getting closer to that design. I had some leftover strawberry tool from me attempting to get on the strawberry just dress craze. That was not success. That was not successful. But as I mentioned, I had some leftover strawberry tool, and so I used it to make this dress, and I absolutely adore this dress. 
this is like so pretty so fun it came out exactly as I had envisioned in my head and I absolutely love it so this is definitely the my most favorite thing that I made Oops. this is definitely my most favorite thing that I made in the year 2022 right. now for sewing reflections when I got a snack because I'm hungry and sewing reflections for the year 2022 so as I was putting everything on the rack and really like looking back and reflecting I realized something that for as much as I have sewn this year I would still only fall in the advanced beginner category which is wild um but the honest truth is that I do not sew things that allow me to stretch myself or grow my skill set out of fear of failure and so for example one of the things that I have wanted to sew for the longest has been a coat I have some really pretty or like it's not pretty but it's really funky and really cool some a wool blend that I picked up from Joann's let me show you if I can get back there because this corner of the sewing room is a hot stinking mess. So I have this wool blend that I picked up from Joann's going on two years ago. And when I picked this up, I was all amped up. I picked up the fabric, I picked up a lining and I was like, yeah, I'm gonna sew myself a really cool coat. No coat has been sewn. I have sewn cardigans. I have not sewn a coat. Um, and I say that to say that of all the sewing that I have done, I do not usually do things that cause me to stretch myself and grow. Recently, I was pattern testing the Celeste Frog for Lydia, Lydia Naomi. And one of the questions was like, what is your skill level? And for intermediate, one of the markers that she had for intermediate was sewing a lined jacket. For as much as I have sewn, I have never sewn a lined jacket. So as much as I sewed last year, I definitely, definitely played it safe. I stayed in my comfort zone and I did not stretch myself in terms of skill sets. I have been wanting to make fly front pants. I haven't done that because of the fear that I have of trying to, or not even the fear, but the apprehension that I have when it comes to trying to actually fit things to my body. I do not like having to do a lot of fitting. I want to sew something, I want to put it on, and I want it to be an okay fit at best. You know, something that I can easily tweak, take in a little here, shorten a little there. That's my speed. Um, so yeah, I played it really, really safe in 2022. And for me, that is a little bit disappointing because one of the things that I have wanted to do is stretch myself and grow my skill set. But I didn't do that much. And so yeah, another takeaway that I have from 2022 is cohesion i sew a lot of sets however a set is a set and a set does not go with another set a set just goes with one set and so while i have this really cute set i can't take this top and this bottom or this bottom excuse me and pair it with much of anything else in my like sewing wardrobe which makes for like a not very cohesive closet and a tricky experience when it comes to getting dressed i am definitely an outfit repeater if i find something i like it and i want to make it and wear it over and over again but one of the ways that that has to or one of the things that enables that idea to work is having a bunch of a bunch of pieces that you can mix and match and since i like to work with color and with print I need to be more conscious this year in making sure that fabric buying, when I buy fabric, I'm thinking about how cohesive is this going to be with the rest of the things in my closet because if it is a top or is it a bottom, ideally I would like to be able to wear it with multiple items. So for my 2022 um, year in review, this year I sewed four pairs of shorts, I sewed four skirts, and I sewed four pairs of pants. So that is four shorts, four skirts, and four pairs of pants. I sewed 22 shirts. Do we see the problem there? <laughs> like, there's not nearly enough bottoms to go with the amounts of shirts that I sewed. On top of sewing like the bottoms, like 12 bottoms, a lot of those bottoms were like prints and specific for a set. So they did not max, they don't mix and match well easily in my wardrobe. So that is something that I need to address. I also sewed four outer pieces. A lot of those were cardigans, most of those were cardigans, and then one like semi jacket. And then I sewed 33 dresses. I am most satisfied with the 33 dresses because dresses are standalone garments and I'm pretty happy with all of the dresses that I sewed. I usually only make dresses that I really like. Um, so I'm pretty happy with that, but I definitely, definitely in 2023 want to work on my separates game. Do I have any more takeaways? No, I don't think I have any more takeaways. Oh, I do have more takeaways. <laughs> so for the patterns that I sewed, I sew a lot of repeats. So if I like a pattern, just looking at like my year in review, I will make that pattern at least three times before I move on to the next one. And while that is all fine and dandy, what is happening is I am not really 
utilizing a large portion of my pattern collection. And I know we all joke, pattern collecting and sewing are two different hobbies, and they really are, but also, I don't want to have a massive pattern collection and I'm only sewing like 5% of those patterns or like 10% of those patterns because as I get more into sewing and starting my YouTube channel, the space in my sewing room is increasingly becoming very limited. And if I'm going to keep buying patterns, then I need to justify those purchases by actually sewing them. So while I did make a lot of garments, I didn't explore a lot of different patterns in the year of 2022. Which brings me to looking forward in my sewing, not necessarily resolutions, but some of the ideas I have for sewing going forward. So the first thing is that this year, I, or I guess it is a resolution. I'm gonna call it a resolution because you know people people don't like resolutions and I, I understand like the idea that you didn't do this thing all year before and now you're gonna pick a day and you're gonna start it and you're gonna do it now and it's gonna be great and it's like the reality is if you didn't do it before what's well, really gonna motivate you to do it now but I don't care I'm setting a resolution anyway. <laughs> so my first sewing resolution is going to be to sew at least 42 new, not, not new to me, but like new patterns this year. So picking 42 different patterns from my stash and sewing those up. Hopefully I will have enough, um, or not hopefully, I will have enough resolve to try and tackle at least one new pattern a week. Obviously there's going to be a lot of hits and misses and fails, but through this I will begin to like actually work through my pattern stash and really be able to determine what in my pattern stash fits me and suits me now and what doesn't anymore. Also the hope is that through doing this I will be able to grow my skill set. So I'll pick new patterns, I'll learn new things hopefully, and I will move out of that advanced beginner category and into the intermediate category. Um, I talked about before cohesion and my wardrobe. That is another looking ahead is having a more cohesive wardrobe. The next thing that I really want to work on in the year of 2023 is becoming better at self-drafting. So while I can self-draft for myself, I don't know anything about grading and sizing up or sizing down. And one day I would love to be able to produce and sell my own patterns. And so this year, I really do want to take some time to educate myself professionally. So seek out professional help on educating myself on how to grade and really properly construct flat patterns. And yeah, I think that's it. That's basically where I was in the year 22 and where I plan to go in the year 2023. Of course, I want to keep making the things that I love. This mock neck shirt that I am wearing right now, I plan on sewing at least three more of these tonight because I put a lot of wear on these things and I really love them and I really enjoy them. So I will keep sewing my tried and true patterns, but I also want to stretch myself and try new things. I wanna sew a real jacket this year. I am going to sew a real jacket this year. Yeah, I'm gonna sew a real jacket this year. <laughs> I have the material for it. I have everything I need. It's just a matter of getting over the initial fear and just doing it. So yeah, that's where I'm at. That's where I was last year. That's where I'm at this year. Thanks so much for watching the full video. And if you sew, I would love to know like, what are you looking back at in the year 2022? And what are you looking forward to for the year 2023? Have you realized anything about the way you approach sewing? Is there anything you'd like to change or anything you'd like to keep doing? Which is a thought for me. I feel like I have fixated a lot on what I was doing, what I wanted to do, but what I want to keep doing. I think one of the things that I want to keep doing this year, since I didn't mention it before, I did mention it with this mock neck top, is sewing what I love. I don't want the idea of growing and stretching myself and learning more to take me away from doing the things that I honestly enjoy. And I love a simple project. So yes, all of these projects were simple. 2022 was an interesting year for me personally, and so I feel like I needed this. I just needed something that didn't require a lot of thought and effort that I could just come in here and zone out and do. And I did that, but 2023 is behind me and we're looking forward to greener and better pastures. And so in that, I do really want to stretch myself. Another thing that I didn't mention, sorry, I feel like I'm rambling, but it is what it is, right? Another thing, my sewing room needs to be addressed in the year 2023. It is not working for me anymore. Um, some of you may have gotten glimpses of my sewing room in the past when it was all cleaned and organized, but my fabric and my pattern stash has grown exponentially. I've gotten more thread and I have books and 
I really just need to rethink and rejig this space in order to, for it to function for me better. The cleanup in my sewing room is becoming harder and harder because I don't have a lot of storage in here. And so things are just piled on top of things and on the floor and on chairs. And it's just, it's chaotic to say the least. So that is another thing that I definitely need to address and will be addressing in the year 2023. Now, seriously, this time, that is it. Thanks so much for tuning in. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Until next time, stay beautiful and make great things. Bye. Thank you.